Joining us now, Wall Street Journal senior writer James Grimaldi. James, it's great to see you and have you on the show. You guys Thank are you. really doing terrific journalism over there. Talk to us about what you, you guys found. Dozens of top government officials, tens of thousands of stock trades since 2016. You guys are calling this kind of like fast trading you only see on Wall Street. What are you finding? Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Well, as you know from the previous segments you've done on this, and thank you for that, we looked at 12,000 federal officials, senior uh, executives in the government and appointees. And what we did in this story was to sort through and find out who had a lot of trades. And we found uh, seven dozen federal officials who had more than 500 trades over a period of just a few years. A lot of them concentrated uh, a lot around during the pandemic and other times. And um, of those seven dozen, they accounted for 80,000 total trades. It was really sort of amazing. And it is the kind of uh, high speed and frequent trading that you might see on Wall Street. Now, some of them did say that they had financial advisors in doing it, but they're still responsible for these trades. And there's some of some critics have said this really raises question in the public mind about whether they're really, you know, investing. Uh, in their own interests or if they're taking advantage of any knowledge they might have in terms of what, they, uh, what they're seeing in their government official positions. So who were they and what agencies were they at? Oh, there were a variety of agencies that we found them in. We had, we had someone who was a chief procurement officer for the IRS who had 1,500 trades. Uh, we had someone from the USDA who had more than 2,000 trades. We had uh, an antitrust official with the Ju Justice Department who had uh, uh, several thousand trades. But the big, big trader of them all was an economist with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And it turned out when we asked about it, it was her husband who at the time worked for the FDIC, the regulator of the banks. 9,500 trades all in 2020. And then when we looked deeper, we saw that he was violating a law, that she, a rule that she was supposed to, to abide by, which was no short trading. So when we asked the CFTC, hey, why did you let this happen? They said, well, they came to us and they said, is it okay if we don't really regulate short trading? Is it okay if we short trade? And they decided, well, they might sue us if we don't let them Go, engage in this short trading, so they went ahead and did short trading. About a third wow. of all the trades were short trading. That's so. That's aggressive trading. I mean, they're making trades in companies that benefited from pandemic bailout spending. We're also James. We're showing on the screen, you know, stolen pandemic jobless benefits too. This feels like government-wide corruption. James, it feels like a story that is just staring you in the face, and it's just there all the time, the whole time, rather. For your final word. Well, I, I think it does raise questions to the public's mind uh, about what's happening in terms of their financial disclosures. And, uh, it, you know, there's a lot of re reforms that are being proposed okay. in Congress on both sides. We'll see what happens. Got it. James Grimaldi, you guys going to have more reporting on this, I hope. We, oh, absolutely. We'll take Keep it. reading. Yeah, good shoe leather journalism. <laughs> this is award-winning stuff. Love it. James, you're terrific. Come back soon.